At the eastern end of the Asian monsoon region, Lake Biwa is located approximately in the center of the Japanese archipelago. With Lake Biwa as our stage, we have long been engaged in fishery and agriculture in harmony with nature, developing a recycling-based system. Lake Biwa is surrounded by mountains, many over 1,000 meters high. All the rain falling on this land flows through about 460 rivers and streams into Lake Biwa. Due to such geographical features, the lake reflects our way of life. Even now, while preserving its water quality, we use the lake for our livelihoods. We call the system the Biwa Lake to Land Integrated System, or simply the Lake Biwa System, and commit ourselves to passing it down to future generations. During the Yayoi period, from the 3rd century BC to the 3rd century AD, people turned reed beds along the lakeshore into rice fields. Fish in the lake, such as many of the Nigorobuna crucian carp, then moved their spawning and nursery grounds to the rice fields. People then began catching the fish gathered in the rice fields to eat, using traps set there and in canals in parallel with their farm work. This fishing practice was called okazu tori, or catching fish for meals at home. It became a pleasurable activity for many people who devised ingenious fishing methods to outwit the fish. Among the advanced fishing methods, the most effective one was eddy, which used a uniquely shaped stationary net. Fish migrating along the shore were guided into a trap called tsubo, where fishermen could catch them. This picture shows a shoreside area of Lake Biwa in the 1600s. It portrays eddy traps set in reed zones to catch fish swimming toward rice fields, as well as other eddy traps extending into the lake. Around this time, Lake Biwa fish became popular in and around then capital Kyoto, and larger eddy traps were consequently used until around the later Edo period, or the late 18th century. At the same time, regulations were put in place to prevent conflicts between fishermen, such as restrictions on the setting of eddy traps. Also, fishing near temples was prohibited. These regulations have developed into the fishing limits put in place today to ensure the sustainable use of resources. For example, one specifies mesh sizes to prevent fishermen from catching small, immature fish which may not have spawned yet. Fish should have spawned at least once before being caught. Meanwhile, a rich food culture was developed by combining a wide variety of fish and agricultural products from the Lake Biwa area. This culture may have contributed to extending people's healthy life. Shrimp and soybeans, and rice boiled with biwa salmon, are among well-known specialties. However, the most notable example of the local food culture is funazushi, fermented crucian carp, which has been made for over 1,000 years. It is said that modern-day sushi derives from this particular dish. Funazushi and other fermented sushi, collectively called narezushi, 
have spread widely in areas around the lake as a way to preserve the large number of fish caught during the spawning season. Narezushi became popular not only as a highly nutritious preserved food, but also as a special dish served on festive occasions, or for guests since it was ready to eat around the New Year's holidays. Narezushi has also been used for rituals around Lake Biwa. These traditional practices have been passed down to the present day by the active involvement of various individuals and organizations. In rice fields around Lake Biwa, the Sakana no Yurikago Suiden project, which can be roughly translated as the Making Rice Fields into Better Spawning Beds project, has been carried out. As part of the project, a series of small dams are built across canals to facilitate the upstream migration of fish to the rice fields. Starting with farmers, local residents have been engaged in this initiative in many places around the lake. With regard to agriculture, the way farmers have used water as a valuable resource has been integrated into the eco-friendly agriculture unique to this land. This farming style has been spreading every year, contributing to the preservation of the lake's water quality. As a result, rice fields now provide suitable habitats for many animals and insects, some of which are rare or endangered. Some fish living in Lake Biwa, including Biwa salmon and Ayu, migrate into streams to spawn. A project named Gyomin no Mori, or Afforestation by Fishermen, is currently being promoted, with the participation of people in the forestry and fishery industries, as well as local residents and businesses. Forest conservation initiatives like this have made important contributions to preserving spawning areas for lake fish by preventing rivers and streams from drying up. As we have seen, people have developed the Lake Biwa system in a unique way while living in harmony with nature. Even today, with 1.4 million people now living around the lake, the Lake Biwa system is still being practiced. Involving people from all walks of life, ranging from those engaged in fishery, agriculture, or forestry, to consumers, businesses, and researchers, the Lake Biwa system has been maintained in harmony with Lake Biwa. Furthermore, Lake Biwa serves not only as a reservoir of safe water to large cities downstream, such as Kyoto and Osaka, but also as a place for international cooperation. For example, the World Lake Conference was first organized and held here. The Lake Biwa system also contributes to achieving the sustainable development goals set by the United Nations. We will pass this Biwa Lake to Land integrated system down to future generations. <laughs>